um, yeah, sorry, yeah, so uh, we'll record this uh, meeting so so that I know so this will be posted to our academy YouTube. So, in case any of you uh, miss it, right? So, just a uh, introduction about Mr. Sidik. He is an accountant with an energy company, so he's always curious to know how things work as during leisure time after work. He loves tinkering with circuit python, Lego, Arduino, and Raspberry Pi. He describes himself as an accountant with interest in programming and electronic. So yeah, before I pass the time to Ms., uh, Mr. Sidi, so maybe I also wanted to have a quick uh, introduction about uh, this uh, economy. Uh, why, why, why is this economy? Right. So maybe most of you are still uh, new with this. So anyway, this is also a very new community that we are trying to run. Okay, so that we wanted to see how everyone uh, respond to this kind of communities and also the uh, this kind of learning so together. So basically, economy is is a, is a community. So where we wanted to have someone to learn together, right? So that's why like uh, the sharing uh, today. So we want to have everyone interested in learning, because I guess if you are learn alone, you might be very challenging, right? Because you might be lost motivation maybe a lack of uh, skills and so on, right? So that's where when we get together, we combine the skills of everyone and that will make the things happen faster, right? So economy uh, actually stands for a company plus academy. So, uh, and also this is actually a, a self-learning organization. So we hope that we help to facilitate the learning among the community members. So like, like all of you are here. So we, we wanted to like, Maybe through the sharing of Mr. C D, we hope that it inspire you. So maybe you can, uh, if anything that you are doing similar like Mr. C D, so you can ask him about how his experience and all that, right? So, so we are actually, for this, it's not just focusing on embedded system. So of course, as a start, we, we hope to start with something. So which is the embedded system and some of the project that you all did. So that, yeah, and also this, this really is about automated and motivated learning. So if you are motivated, you are inspired, you will learn by yourself, right? So that's where, yeah, and of course, uh, with this community, we hope that we can provide the support to all of the community members uh, via our network of uh, organizations and so on, right? So maybe sometimes we might have some mentors so uh, in this uh, community, right? Yeah, so I guess, let me see, I think, ah, the invitation link, yes, uh, you just a uh, nice one. So uh, yeah, I will share the invitation link. So in the chat, so give me a moment. So I guess because you, probably can't see my screen. Okay, so this is the invitation link. So this is a short link to join. Yeah, so either the summer also uh, send the invitation link so you can join the community. Uh, that, that is the community that we have. Okay, so uh, just uh, maybe I'll just quick intro. This is the community. So we have just set up some of the channels. So whenever you are joining, so you are able to, uh, so right now we have like 72 members and uh, yeah, so, 73 members and can do self intros and also uh, some of the giveaway uh, and also upcoming events. So which is one of these event. And also next, I think we'll have uh, uh, some other sharing. So we can have a look at here, microcontrollers, uh, softwares, uh, learning groups. Okay, so different learning groups in the different topics. Okay, so I guess that's about it for the introduction. And I guess I will pass the time to Mr. Uh, see that, let me uh, unshare my screen and uh, give you the share. Uh, give you the share. Right. Okay. Give me a moment. Okay. Yep. I guess now you can share. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Vincent, for for introduction of of myself. Uh, basically, uh, thanks to all participants. Uh, good good evening for for participant with with the same time zone as me, GMT plus eight, and good morning or good afternoon for other participant who may be from different time zone. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, the distribution of our our participant here. Uh, so let me even even 
Vincent already explained a, a bit about myself. Let me just give a quick introduction. Uh, so as Vincent said, I am an accountant. Uh, I am not an expert or I don't have any technical background. So uh, just tinkering as is my hobby. And I, I like to tinker with uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, uh, Circuit Python, and, and Lego. And that, all of that is during uh, leisure time after work or during weekend. Uh, so today I will share about my project, uh, which is uh, selected as the SC Studio uh, project for the for the month for for March basically, and it's titled uh, Full Stack uh, Raspberry Pi Chip Stack LoRaWAN Environment Dashboard. Uh, okay. I I don't have any any presentation material, so I I, I will just share uh, my screen. <laughs> it, and if there there is anything that you want to ask, just just ask in chat or un unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, before that, let refresh our knowledge. Uh, what LoRaWAN is, okay. Uh, LoRa or short form for long range is the physical proprietary, proprietary radio modulation, modulation technique and it is based on spread spectrum modulation technique derived from CHIRP spread spectrum CSS technology. If you're familiar with uh, the radio technology, there are a few uh, spectrum. So LoRa is derived from Church Spread Spectrum or CSS, and it was developed by Cyclio, uh, a company uh, of Grenoble, France, which is later acquired by Semtec. So LoRa has become one of the de facto standard wireless platform of IoT. Uh, uh, and it enables smart IoT application, which include uh, smart agriculture, environment mon monitoring, energy, pollution control, infrastructure, and disaster prevention. And additionally, uh, the bit rate of LoRa is very small, which is range from 0 0.3 kilobit per second to 50 kilobit per second. And it utilizes low power, but the range uh, can be up to 100 kilometer or more. Okay, so that, that's the, the brief introduction of LoRa. Uh, if I, I basically, I, I don't know the technical detail just from my reading. Uh, okay, basically, for a LoRa network, there are a few components which is first is the things or the nodes. The nodes is where the sensor, where sense. Any question? <laughs> okay, nodes basically is, is the sensor which is connected to microcontroller and then connected to the transmitter, which is LoRa radio transmitter. So it is the nodes. Uh, so the nodes can be uh, like gas monitoring, it's sensor for gas monitoring, or it can be uh, pet tracking or asset tracking or smoke alarm or even water meter. And then the communication between the nodes and the gateway, the second component is the gateway or concentrator, will be through LoRa radio. So, so that's the the LoRa camera. So from the concentrator, it will be uh, transferred to network server through TCP IP through, or through UDP. And then uh, the network server will pass to application server. So for, for my project, basically I demonstrate how we set up uh, from the end, end nodes, which is a growth LoRa E5 node in this case. And then I set up uh, 
all the gateway the the bridge bridge uh, and then the network server the application server all of this component in raspberry pi uh, and then the 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 data the data from the sensor is uh, transferred through mqtt it is a protocol to transfer the data to node rate and then the node rate will uh, clean up and translate all the data and store it into database in FluxDB database. In FluxDB is a time series database uh, which is used mainly to store uh, time-based data, which is it, it have the time time uh, time time frame. It, 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 and then uh, from the influx DB, we extract the data and display it in uh, Grafana. Grafana is uh, is a dashboard. Okay. Because basically, uh, in in my hexter.io posting, I I I do a brief introduction of what is the each component, which is LoRaWAN gateway. LoRaWAN bridge, network server, application server, what is MQTT, and also the integ integration part, which is node rate, uh, which is to receive data from MQTT, clean up, convert, and filter the data, and connect to InfluxDB database. And then InfluxDB, and lastly, Grafana to retrieve data from InfluxDB, and display the data as, uh, as chart, the table or gauge and this is the final the final uh, dashboard basically just the basic dashboard we have uh, pm 2.5 uh, particulate matter and then co2 carbon dioxide temperature humidity and and this this one in in the form of graph and this one in the form of uh, gauge how to okay so okay ah okay so so in this project also i show how to install all of this application in on raspberry pi it can be in a single raspberry pi or it can be, uh, in, in my case, I install a gateway, the bridge, and also server in one, one Raspberry Pi, and then the integration part, I, I install in another Raspberry Pi. So it is within the, the local network. So basically, uh, LoRa uh, network server can be run either cloud-hosted. Uh, if you heard about Helium, I think it is the most popular one currently because of the uh, the HNT mining, I think. And then uh, there, there is also the Things Network and also AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN. And also it can be set up uh, as self-hosted. Self-hosted mean within the local network. We set up ourselves for the server. Uh, the example of of self-hosted is which is integrated one is chirp stack which is in my demo today and then tts the things tech enterprise or the things stack open source and it can be either free or paid based on features and support provided by the software maker usually self-hosted uh, they provide the open source uh, version so it, it is free for us to to play around uh, so why do we choose self-hosted? So that there is use case for cloud hosted and self-hosted. Uh, self-hosted basically it is for learning and development. Uh, where we want to rapidly test the function and features, and also for production where we want to contain the network within our premise. So for security reason, we don't want our data to be 
to be in the cloud so so we we set the safe poster uh, i hope everybody uh, is there any anything that you want to ask please please just ask okay uh, it, uh, i show how to install the application on raspberry pi which is uh, for this purpose uh, there is one head this is head which is a uh, rat wireless head okay uh, i attach it to the raspberry pi and then just install following the instruction provided in the github in the github here so i just just follow this this uh, script lah the simple script and then i set up the rat gateway channel plan uh, i choose the region for myself is as923 for Malaysia and then I install the chirp stack network server application server bridge and MQTT so it's also the instruction is here just follow the instruction okay, and then there there will be one uh, web based interface where we can see our gateway with, with the GPS location Okay, and then we create service profile and device profile. Okay, uh, okay there, there is uh, one thing in the codec tab. Okay, because of the, the data from a sensor is transferred to, to LoRa server using JSON. So we have to decode the data using a javascript function here so we put the javascript function here we decode the the data from uh, the microcontroller from the, the lora node okay and then we create application uh, generate generate key okay and then uh, next step is to install node rate so all the steps here okay so the installation part finish here okay i also put the link uh, the detail walkthrough and uh, also a youtube video that show installation of node rate in fact db and grafana okay uh, that that is on the installation part the second part is to set up the circuit python code on the node okay i i know uh, that usually people are familiar with arduino ide i arduino which is in c++ or or in arduino sketch so in this case i am using circuit python uh, basically circuit python is a programming language that's developed by the fruit based on micro python and it is it is based on python python language uh, and circuit python is developed for specifically for microcontroller it's, it's scaled down for microcontroller uh, for this case we are i'm using a mu editor as as uh, ide and then I also show how to install the circuit Python firmware and then uh, copy the circuit Python code into a file name code.py and save it to circuit Py drive. And then there is a few library need to be copied into the circuit Python uh, folder. Okay, so the component of the node. Firstly, the main one is microcontroller, which in this case I use Cduino Xiao RP2040. It is based on Raspberry Pi uh, chip RP2040. Okay, this this one. Uh, and then uh, I attach it to Growth Shield for Xiao. This is the 
Jiao attached to growth shield and then link to growth I2C hub six port. This is I2C hub, which is connected to I2C port here. And then from this hub, uh, I connected to growth OLED display, uh, growth CO2 and humidity and temperature SCD30. Uh, this one. And then growth PM 2.5, HM3301, this one. This is for particulate matter. It, it can measure the PM 2.5 and so also PM 10. And finally, for the communication part, uh, I connected uh, growth LoRa E5 uh, to UART, UART port on growth shield. So the connection to the microcontroller is two. One is to I2C, and one is UART to growth LoRa E5. Okay, and then this is the uh, the mic circuit Python library. You can just copy paste, not not library script. <laughs> just copy paste the script. If you if you use the say exactly the same component as as the setup, it can be used uh, immediately. And then you just have to replace the app key here. App key here with the one that we set up in earlier earlier stage. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, in earlier stage. Yeah. Okay, I, I should scroll it. Okay. Okay, if all things installed correctly, uh, serial console should show network join successfully and nodes will start to up upload the data to gateway. So this is the uh, screenshot of Mew editor. This, at the bottom is serial console. Okay. Uh, we can see uh, the data is transferred here. ATCH is stand for uh, T temperature, C is the CO2, H is the humidity, A is for air quality. Okay, it, it will send the data in hex format. Uh, it convert this just on text in hex format. And then the server will acknowledge that this data is, is received by the server. Okay, and then we can check in the web web uh, web application, which is located at localhost 8080, 8080 port. So it will show the, the uplink data here. So it's the, the time and the, the uplink data. And then we can see the payload sensor data, which is ACHT. It's put under object just on here. So basically the, the data uploaded uh, is, is this full full data, but, but the one that we want to use is basically is, is only this object just on data. You can see that this one, the, this, this data is the hex data before it converted to object to the human readable format. Okay, and then uh, this data will be published uh, through MQTT. So, so the, the broker will publish the, the data. So in, in our case, the, the, there is topic created, which is this topic. We can see, we can check the topic by, by putting this this command. Okay, and this is the full MQTT data, full full JSON data. So our actual usable data is this highlighted in in yellow object JSON. Other than that, it also show uh, unrelevant data, which is like the 
longitude latitude what whatever else. the the radio data also and then uh, from this mqtt okay we will process this data in node rate okay okay for node rate there 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 are a, a few things need to be done first uh, we, we have to clean up this data because we only want uh, this this data so so we we'll, we filter we filter by by uh, using the palette which is mqtt in to subscribe mqtt topic and then just on to convert payload object just on uh, to javascript just on object and also uh, palette change to set the message payload to message payload object just on and then the last one is we store the data the clean data to influx db so we put uh, in in database called in measurement called environment so the useful <laughs> sorry the useful followed palette is debug palette which is this screen so at each uh, palette we can check what is the output of that palette by putting this uh, debug palette okay so now we already store the data to influx db next is the the display which is we use grafana dashboard okay grafana dashboard also can be accessed through web browser the port default port is uh, 3000 so in grafana dashboard we create data source to influx db and put all the credential set earlier okay, like username and password okay uh, and then this is the data source the data source influx db so we select table environment and then we select all okay uh, this is for pm 2.5 uh, PM 2.5 data only. So after we already set up the Grafana dashboard, so this is the time series data which shows the the environmental uh, sensor reading, like I showed earlier. Uh, at the top is PM 2.5 and temperature. Uh, humidity and co2 so we can set the the time uh, at the even one day or last one hour or last five hours we can set all the the time here okay, uh, so we can uh, select white team it's either black team or white team. Okay, so so that that's the the summary. That's that the summary. So in in summary, uh, uh, in this project, I demonstrated first how to install uh, all the gateway the application in a Raspberry Pi local network. And then second, how to upload sensor data using circuit Python via Growth LoRa E5 from Node to Gateway, and then how to configure and clean up the data using Node Red, and then how to display the environment dashboard in Grafana. So, so all this demo is for uplink, uplink function. I uh, uplink, uplink function only lah, which is uplink mean uh, the data from sensor to the to the dashboard but uh, the application of flora there, there is also another one which is downlink where we send data from server to the lora node but it's not covered here maybe somebody can share the downlink uh Ayman, Ayman can share in the future for the downlink uh, function in 
Dora Wen. And also, okay, today I supposed to share to you the live demo, but just when I set up there are some technical problem, so I I I don't know what what was go wrong. So uh, previously I shared the live demo in in my YouTube. Let me share my YouTube first. Where is it? Okay, here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, YouTube, you can. So, so in in this YouTube, I I demonstrate live demo from from Mew. Okay, I just play. Okay, this is the live demo. Eh? So the data is sent every five second to to the chip stack chip stack. Uh, server and then okay every every five second or every 15 second i, I didn't, didn't remember okay so every 15 second i think uh, so every 15 second it it will change uh, the data we can see the the live the live update now. And then okay, and then lastly it is updated to, to the grafana. Okay, I think that's all my sharing. Uh, I hope uh, you uh, can appreciate what, what is I'm trying I'm trying to share. Uh, so if, if there is any any question you, you may ask now, but uh i'm not i mean if if i cannot answer now maybe i i will come back to you later so is is there anything you want to ask or you want to share anything okay yeah i think thanks uh thanks uh mr Sidi. so i guess it's very uh great project sharing from how the starting until the end so maybe before before uh, yeah, maybe we open to the floor if any questions or anything that you would like to understand from Mr. CD about this project. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone? So you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask directly. Yeah. Oh, so there's a question from someone. Maybe someone you can just already unmute yourself and ask in the chat right here. Uh, in the in the this uh webinar. Okay. Uh, someone asked why I'm using chip stack instead of TTN. Okay, uh, okay. To be frank, previously I never heard about chip stack, so I I already trying to use TTN for local setup, uh, and for the cloud base, I successfully uh set up the LoRa LoRa uh, in cloud in TTN the thing stack, but for local setup, I'm not sure what what's going wrong when when i try to set up uh, it the gateway just didn't appear so i did some some search and then i find out the chip, chip stack is is easier to set up so actually tts also can be set up locally there is a github for that i i try a few time but but didn't successful. Maybe maybe the script is not suitable for 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 the region. I'm I'm not sure because my region is AS nine two three and the script is mainly used for US and and UK. Okay. Mm. All right. Thanks. Uh, I hope it uh, answers the the questions. So yeah, is 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 there any question? If not, maybe I I have one where uh, probably just my own uh very um my personal uh, question is that yeah because uh, i mean i'm it's actually very interesting to see that from your background as an accountant so how long actually you you used to learn all this by yourself right i mean you i think you are more like self-learning for this right yeah okay uh, as this is hobby i just i uh, usually uh when when that when when it's not busy during during uh doing the real real life work so during weekend or during night so it, yeah. it 
depends. Even uh, the interest also sometimes jump from electronic and, and sometimes uh, exploring the Python. So can, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so particularly for this, uh, for your for you to write up this entire project also on the Hector, how long do you take uh, as in to come up with the projects and the live demo or that, right? For this, uh, about one or two weeks, I think. Oh, okay, uh, that's good. So one to two weeks, you can uh, pick up this. So I, I guess, uh, I think those uh, platforms are probably, uh, I think is it all the guides and documentation are very well so that you can just follow yeah. through, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yes. that, that's good to know. The, the, the tricky part, of this, I think about on the script itself, the circuit Python script, because there is no no existing circuit Python library. So I have to I have to develop not develop the create. I have to create my own script. Usually, we, we for Arduino we can just copy paste other script. So this for this no existing uh, script. And so, cola, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I yep. see. I see. Yeah, that's good. So, and, and, and so another one is the encoding script. Uh, because yeah. the encoding script, the, J, J, the JavaScript. JavaScript, I, I'm not familiar with JavaScript. But yeah. there is uh, one, one section I, I showed earlier that we have yeah. to encode the data. And the one that available is for the things that work. Uh, but for chip stack, the, 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 I, I couldn't find the example so i have to try an error that that take what half a day <laughs> oh okay yeah that's a lot of try and error i, I can yeah, yeah. see that right and of, of course uh, not not from the example uh, coding right so i guess yeah definitely that's a very great uh, uh project from this yeah so any one have any questions from the floor if you uh, uh do not want to speak you can just uh, type it in the chat session so that we can uh, pick it up from uh, there. So, and uh, Mr. CD will try his best to answer live. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about this uh, or maybe anything in general? So feel free to ask. So we are all here to learn together. So that's our common uh, goal right here, right? So yeah. that, yeah. Or maybe anything to add on from Mr. Siddiq? Oh, there's okay, one. Okay, Ayman. Okay, how's your experience with the circuit Python or micro Python so far? I think uh, it is uh, quite new, uh, but but I like circuit Python because as compared to Arduino, uh, we don't have to compile it because Arduino, each time we we want to save, we have to compile and wait for for to upload to to the microcontroller but for circuit python when we save it it's immediately run so so we don't have to wait <laughs> yeah there there is pro and cons of between this circuit python and arduino lah. but oh. but for development purpose i think circuit python is the the experience is is good because we don't have to wait it to, to compile yeah. The, the only thing is the library may be limited because it is uh, relatively new. Yeah, maybe maybe just to add on from the Ayman question. So how, how long have you been learning this uh, circuit Python to, to come up with this kind of uh, project? So? Okay, uh circuit Python. Uh, circuit Python uh, basically is just for a few a few months. A few months, all right, mm. nice. Yep, there's another question from uh, Faiz. Okay. So Shell LP2 Jojo. Shell or, or ESP32, which one you choose? Okay, for, for circuit Python, basically ESP32, the original one, uh, we, uh, I don't think we can run on the original one, but we can run in ESP32 uh, C3 and S3 and S2. Uh, mm. Yeah. But for circuit python currently it support uh Xiao rp2040 and then uh, some nordic semiconductor uh, smd21 and 51 so 
So for ESP32, uh, the recent the recent chip is supported. So so I I uh, if RP2040 versus ESP32 S3 for now I it, it depend on my my use case lah because ESP32 you have the the additional feature like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So if my project require that maybe I prefer that. Uh, and the interesting part, Arduino have one one board called uh, Arduino RP2040 Connect, which integrate uh, Wi-Fi. So I I also explore that, but uh, didn't didn't create any any useful project yet. I'm still exploring. Hmm. Okay, that is uh yeah very good answer. So like someone mentioned, mentioned it's like car and bike, right? Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, it also really depends on your use cases, uh, yeah, right? Correct, correct. So and also whether do you use circuit pythons or C C plus plus uh, to do yeah. Oh, I must say we got to give a chance for RP two zero four zero to show the power. Yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, is there any other uh? A burning questions for the Mr. Sidek. Right now, here we have uh, like about the uh, 14 of us right here, including myself. Oh, five, five. What project do you plan to do? Right, yeah. So, by uh, yeah, Paul. Maybe in future, Faiz can, can share the project. Yeah. I, I think Ayman will, will have the session in. Saturday, yeah, this, right? this week we can use. Please, please join that Ayman project. I think it's interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> so for Faiz, are you there? Maybe do you want to share or with us what project do you plan to do? So maybe yeah, maybe the group here we can see. Uh, is there any interest that we like to do together? Or maybe help you to choose the uh the development board that is suitable for your project, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just why I did it. Uh, the, the interesting part of this is actually we can set in the this low cost Raspberry Pi, which is mm. okay. This this one you can see this one. So all all in this Raspberry Pi, we don't need the supercomputer or server. Mm. So. So, uh, like if in agriculture, maybe it's located at remote area without any uh, fast internet, you can use this one because Lora LoRaWAN network, the the range can can be up to hundred kilometer, depend on the antenna. Mm. Yep. 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 I, I guess yeah. Chip for Laura for myself. Actually, I haven't really tried out uh, the Laura. Maybe another question that I have is that so is uh I mean maybe I, I don't dare to try is because uh I'm not too sure is that uh I think is that a, a bandwidth or what that is approved to be used in Malaysia or maybe in yeah. the Southeast Asia. Uh in Malaysia basically okay, it's not yet re regulated, but but this uh according to uh, someone check with MCMC. This AS923, which is 900 to 32 kilohertz, is it? Uh, is is uh, is available to use for unlicensed. So okay. this AS923, even uh, for helium network, uh, there there are a lot of already the 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 helium. The network in Malaysia. Mining, yes. Yep. Oh, in okay. KL, in Penang, in Johor. I see, yeah. So, yeah, because last time when I, I mean, I probably is a bad in few years when I have some LoRa modules, I, I kind of like don't dare to use because I, I'm not too sure later when I fire it out, then will someone come after me, right? <laughs> yeah, saying that I, I radiate I, the, the thing. I, I think Singapore also covered, covered, whole Singapore is covered by Helium Network, I think. Yeah, 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 I think helium is a is a popular one, right? Yeah, yeah that, that is quite quite a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Faiz mentioned I'm just planning to okay. buy uh, only one of these boards. Okay, so either the RP two zero zero. In, in or... terms of price, it is similar basically. Yeah, about about the same. Yeah, maybe ASP thirty two, the old one is cheaper, hmm. but there there are features. 
between those two. Yeah, I guess time to time also in the community, we'll be giving, uh, having some giveaway and, and so on. So you can just uh, stay tuned. And also so that, uh, I mean, I just share your project idea with us and we'll see how best we can uh, support you. Okay, so Ayman mentioned by legal in yeah. Malaysia, 915 megahertz to 925 megahertz free license legally to operate it freely. If you want to operate other frequency, we need to take the ham radio exam and license. Oh, in India, it's 865 megahertz for LoRa. Yeah. Oh, uh, I it, see. That's interesting to know. In Europe, it's 400 something, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you, Neval. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So, that, that's a very good learning. So, a different uh, LoRa that is okay to be used for each country. Right. Yeah. Okay. More size and megahertz, more. Oh, oh, I mean, uh, further to send the data for Laura, is it? Yeah, a question by Faiz. Sure, on that. I'm not, I'm, I, frankly, I'm huh. not sure. Can I? Can I? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, this is based on uh, yellow, uh, I'm pretty sure this is question by Faiz, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to answer the part is question. Uh, you can call this the Malaysia 915. Uh, by theoretical, you, you might able to get at least five kilometer. By practical solution, only one kilometer you will be able to reach. But because of the regulatory and stuff, um, you are limited by the power consumption of the radio device. So that is a bit complicated to answer it, but. I would say that any frequency actually is, is a long range, but what make it uh, depend, what make it uh, differences is the case study of our situation. Let's say if you, if you want to do the LoRa system in a, in a building, in a concrete building, the range will be limited. So by in a nutshell, you, mean you need to put it depend on the use case for the particular case. Hmm. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. So, so yeah, really, it's, it's depend on the use case, and then, then uh, we only deep dive to what the, do we need. The, and, and the, en the environment. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's good. So, yeah, that's uh, quite a good question and answers. So, is there anything else that we wanted to ask? Right. If not, I think, uh, okay, I want to mention the megahertz doesn't really matter. It's the environment that matters and situation, yes. And also, yeah. So that I think the the all these megahertz is, is, is also just to make sure that it doesn't clash with other uh, radio frequency, right? Because Delco. it might disturb, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. So let me just check if anyone still have any questions. So from the chat, there's no. Then uh, anyone else? If not, then I think. Uh, that, that should be all for the uh, sharing today by uh, Mr. Sidik. So thank you very much. And before we all go, so I will just like to, uh, uh, I mean, I just to call for, uh, I mean, I volunteer, I mean, I, I just uh, for this. Uh, so our, our community is actually actively looking for uh, speakers like Mr. Sidik, so or maybe anyone uh, that if you do some projects or if you have some, any projects idea that you would like to do and also doing some sharing with the community, like learning together. So, so it's, it's in this session, I think that yeah, Mr. City is the one that's sharing, but actually we are learning together, right? So that's yeah. where I think yeah, we learn like what, what, what is the things and so on. So yeah, if you have any project ideas or maybe anything that you have done that you think interesting to share with the community or maybe to like learn together uh, some of the concept and so on. So feel free to uh, reach out to uh, myself in the community or maybe, uh, uh, and maybe just uh, ask in the community so that we can uh, help you. And also maybe you can also organize some session with you so that uh, and also help you to market it in the Facebook and also other uh, platforms so that uh, yeah, your, your projects will be uh, reached out to more people, right? Yeah. So feel free to join the community again. So uh, in case you don't have the link, so maybe I will just share the link again. So this is the community that we are having, the economy. And also I will also share the uh, Mr. Sidik's uh, Hester uh, link as well. So of course, uh, if you don't get the link, feel free to join this community so that we will always uh, share uh, some of the uh, articles and stuff that done by the community. 
okay so that uh so that is it's, it's from the community lah. i mean we are the community so for the community right yeah so is there any last thing from everyone here that i miss or that you wanted to know okay three two one okay if not then i think that's all for today thank you very much everyone so for this also uh later on yeah uh, we'll share these uh, recordings and stuff onto our youtube so in case you want to revise and, and so on right okay thank you very much goodbye everyone okay, thank you bye. Okay, bye see you at discord yeah.